All right, today I want to look at two marbles here um, in this jar. So both marbles here have the same mass. They're identical, they're just different colors just to make it a little bit clearer, but they both have a mass of 75 grams. They both have the same diameter of two centimeters, and then they're stacked kind of on an angle like this, and they're stacked in a container that is three centimeters wide. So the basic question is, what are all these contact forces at point A, B, and C? And also, what's the contact force between the two marbles? Okay, so first thing we gotta do is, let's look at just the geometry of the situation, which is why I kinda drew this figure here on the left-hand side. So this is three centimeters. And let's kind of just draw a point here at the center of each marble. We know each marble here has a diameter of two centimeters. So that means that this distance down over here has to be one centimeter. Okay, now let's consider a triangle here that kind of joins the centers. And imagine a triangle that just goes down, our right angle triangle like this. This is also one centimeter. <laughs> now what else can you say? The line joining them, again, that's twice the radius. If that's twice the radius, that's exactly equal to the diameter. So this distance from here, the center to center, has to be also two centimeters. So right away, we can determine what this angle is here inside, uh, kind of the, inside uh, both marbles here. So if you just use sine, sine is one over two, right? You get sine of theta equals one centimeter divided by two centimeters. And right away, you can tell that the angle uh, theta has to be 30 degrees. And you get that just from the geometry of the stacking. If the width was narrower, then the angle would be smaller, but just for this particular geometry of marble size and width of the container, you get an angle of 30 degrees. That's going to be important uh, in just a little bit. So first thing we got to do is do free body diagrams. We have two objects. We should do two free body diagrams. I'm going to label all the forces directly on the figure over here. So the first thing you can start off is since they both have a mass, they both have a weight. So let's go ahead and put that one there. And I might exaggerate some of these vectors here, so they might not all be drawn to the proper length, but so they both have the same weight acting down. All right, so what else we have? Well, we have contact points between the bottom marble here and the container, so we should have contact forces there. There should be a contact force acting at point B, and that's the bottom of the jar pushing up on the marble. I'm going to call that force B. Uh, let me move it over a little bit because I'm going to need some more space here. So I'll call that force B here. Uh, what else? Well, there's a contact point at point A over here. We're going to have a force over here, FA. Uh, what else? Well, there's also both marbles in contact, right? Both marbles are in contact. That means that the blue one pushes on this bottom one, on the purple one. And the direction of that force, again, has to be in this direction over here. Let's call that maybe a normal force, N. What else? There's a contact point over here pushing on the blue ball. Uh, that force here should be perpendicular to the wall. Again, it's, they're all kind of normal forces, but we're going to call this FC. And now since I put this normal force here on the purple one, Newton's third law says that every action is an equal and opposite reaction. So that means that the purple one must also be pushing on the blue one with an equal and opposite force like this. So same magnitude, different direction, and most importantly, different objects. All right, this is all the forces. Uh, these are all the forces here acting on the object. So if this object is in equilibrium, so each object is in equilibrium, that means that the sum of the forces must be equal to zero. And actually, if you can imagine them almost kind of fused together, um, they're also not rotating, right, if they're fused together. So not only do the sum of the forces on the total system have to be equal to zero, but also the sum of the torque must be equal to zero. So we've got a whole bunch of different ways we can look at this. So first we got to define a coordinate system. So for the forces, I'm just going to choose a standard coordinate system, positive X pointing to the right, positive Y pointing up. All right, and for torque, I'm going to choose counterclockwise to be positive, clockwise torques to be negative. All right, so we're off to the races now. Let's first look at the sum of the forces in the vertical direction. That's in the y direction. Those must be equal to zero. And let's look at all the forces acting on the system. So the system are gonna be both, mar both marbles together. So what are the two forces acting down? Well, we have the two weights acting down. So we have 
must be equal to minus 2 times the weight. And what forces are acting up? The only force kind of acting up, actually on the system, um, is going to be this force FB. And that's going to be acting up like this. Plus FB must be equal to 0. Now, if you wanted to, if you did all the forces only on one marble, um, your expression would look a little bit different because then you would have to add a component of the normal force acting to that. However, since we're considering the total force acting on the system, we don't really have to consider the normal force. Let's just have a look. If you actually did break it down into two systems, what it would look like. If I did only the purple one, if you looked at all the forces in the vertical direction acting on the purple one, it would look like this. First, you'd have zero because it's not accelerating. What else? Then you would have the weight acting down minus the weight. <laughs> uh, you would have FB acting up. However, there's also a component of that normal force that's acting down now. And that component of the normal force that's acting down is this one here. So it's acting down. So first it has to be negative. And this here would be N cos of the angle theta. That would have to be equal to zero. And then you go ahead and you consider the blue one. For the blue one, you'd have a similar expression. You have the sum of the forces must be equal to zero. There's a weight acting down. Uh, what force is acting up? Oh, there's no FB acting on the blue one. However, there is a component of the normal, and you would find you'd have to have plus N cos theta must be equal to zero. So actually, both of these expressions here, if I sum them up, I get zero on this side. I get minus 2W on this side. I get plus FB on this side. And both of these normal forces cancel out. So again, you're left with the same expression that we have in equation one, whether you simply treat them as a system or whether or not you break it down and look at the forces on the individual marbles. So we get the same thing at the end. Thank goodness. <laughs> okay, so right away we can solve for what FB is. FB is simply equal to two times the weight. And the weight, well, it's mass uh, mg. So it can simply evaluate this right away. So two times uh, zero dot... 0 0.75 and multiplied by little g 9.8. I think if I did that correctly, I get a force of B equal to 1.47 newtons. Okay, so that's it for force B. Let's go ahead and solve for the other forces now. Okay, so I've cleaned up the diagram a little bit. I've written the results from the first part here for the force of contact point B equal to 1.47 newtons. Now let's look at um, maybe the other contact forces here, FC and FA. Um, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna place a pivot right here. And you can place a pivot anywhere, but this ends up being a pretty good location because what it's going to do is a lot of the torque now produced by all of these forces are gonna be equal to zero if I place the pivot here because their line of action goes directly through the pivot. Or in other words, the angle between the uh, radial distance or the radial vector and the force is either 0 or 180 degrees. And we know those forces don't produce torque. So let me go ahead and place the pivot right here. Let me write that here. And let's look at all the torque produced by all of these forces if I place the pivot here. At the end of the day, we know we have to have this, that the sum of the torque produced by all those forces must be equal to 0. So we don't have to worry about FB. FB goes right through the pivot, so its distance to the pivot, or the line of action of that force, is zero. What else? The weight also is, that would not tend, at least this one over here, would not tend to make the object rotate. FA is also acting right through the pivot, so that one also would not make it rotate. Both normal forces also would not make it rotate. So the only two forces we're left to have to worry about is the weight down over here, Right? If I place my pivot here and I have a weight acting down, that there produces torque and produces clockwise torque on the system. And also this force FC. This force FC acts in a line of action here. Let me draw this line of action for the force FC that goes like this. So this force, if I place my pivot down here, produces torque that is in the counterclockwise direction. And that's it. Those are the only two forces that produce torque. So that's all we have to worry about. So let's go ahead and calculate each one of those. Now what I'm going to do here, since both forces are constant, uh, the torque produced by those forces can simply be written as the distance 
The perpendicular distance from the line of action to the pivot, which is the shortest distance, simply multiplied by the force. So that means that the torque produced by the force FC is going to be equal to what? Well, what is the shortest distance between the line of action and the pivot? Here's the line of action, that red dashed line, and the pivot is right here. Um, so that distance right here, let me write it out here on the diagram. It's this distance over here. And again, if you remember, you know this angle over here was 30 degrees. And you know the distance from center to center of both of these marbles is twice the radius. So you should be able to convince yourself here that this should be 2r cos of the angle theta. So that's the distance, the shortest distance from the line of action to the pivot. So that's what we get here. We get 2r cos of the angle theta multiplied by the force, Fc. That is the torque produced by Fc if my pivot's down there. Uh, this is going to be a positive value because it would tend to make this object rotate uh, counterclockwise. So the other one we have to worry about is the torque produced by the weight on the blue marble. In that case, what is the distance to the pivot? Well, the distance to the pivot in this case is simply the radius. Look at, right? And that just comes from the geometry. So that's simply the radius. The magnitude of two to the force is simply W. And that's it. Now you simply have to add them up. And this one here is going to be negative because if this is the only force acting on it, I would tend to make it rotate in the clockwise direction. All right, so now we add them all up. And that has to be equal to zero. So that means you're going to get 2r cos of 30 degrees multiplied by fc minus r times w must be equal to zero. You notice we have r's everywhere. You can get rid of those terms. And what you're left with is simply one expression for the force FC. FC is simply equal to the weight divided by 2 times cos of the angle theta. We can substitute everything here. The mass is mg, or sorry, the weight is mg, and 2 times cos of the angle theta. We know the mass is 75 grams. You know little g is 9.8, and cos of 30, you can evaluate that with your calculator. At the end of the day, I think I got 0 0.424 newtons for this force FC. So let me add that one upstairs here. FC equals to 0.424. Okay, so that one's easy. The next one's actually really, really easy. The contact force FA. Look at all the forces acting on the system, right? Again, if you look at all the forces acting on the system and you consider only the forces in the horizontal direction, well, you're gonna find that FA has to be equal to FC. Again, you're going to proceed. If you either consider the whole system, then you don't have to worry about the normal force. If you consider the forces on each individual marble, um, then you're going to have two equations because you have to write the sum of the forces acting on the uh, purple marble and the sum of the forces in the x direction acting on the blue marble. Um, this is almost the same thing as the example I just gave with the vertical direction. So I'm not going to redo this but you're eventually going to find that FA must be equal to FC in magnitude. They're in opposite directions. So that means, let me just write that up here, FA has to be equal to 0 0.424. All right, so we found all the contact forces. The only forces remaining now are the normal forces. So let's go ahead and clean up this diagram and find that normal force. Okay, so for the bottom marble, what I would consider here or for the normal force, let's just consider the bottom marble and let's just add up all the forces. It's in equilibrium, therefore the sum of the forces in the x direction must be equal to zero or the sum of the forces in the y direction must be equal to zero on that marble. So let's go ahead and just consider this bottom marble and look at all the sum of the forces in the x direction. So we've got FA which points to the right. So I'm going to call that positive FA. I know the magnitude, I just calculated it. What other forces on the purple marble are acting in the horizontal direction? Well, there's only one component of the normal force. The normal force is acting at this angle theta over here. So for that one, that has to be negative. And it's going to be N. Now, if you think about this for a minute, that should be N sine of the angle theta. And that must be equal to zero. There are no other components or forces acting in the horizontal direction. So right away, the only unknown in my equation over here is the normal force N. So N is simply equal to FA divided by sine of the angle theta. 
Uh, right away, you evaluate that, you get just twice, right? Because sine of 30 degrees is one half, so 848 newtons. Now, if you wanted to do this using the vertical forces on the uh, bottom marble, we can also do that. And you're going to get the same answer, but let me just, for completeness, just write this out. Now, if you have some of the forces in the vertical direction now, well, on the purple marble, so there's the weight acting down, so it's minus the weight. There's FB acting up, plus FB. Now, again, there's a component of this normal force that's acting down. And the component of the force, the normal force acting down, uh, must be N cos of 30 degrees. And that has to be equal to zero. So again, if you solve for the normal force in this case, you're going to find that the normal force is equal to FB uh, minus the weight. And all of this gets divided by cos of 30 degrees. You punch all that in the calculator, and lo and behold, you get 848 newtons. You're going to get the same answer regardless of which equation you decided to choose. You could have also done the sum of the forces on the top marble. We would have got the same answer. The only thing you just got to remember that the normal force acts in an opposite direction for the top marble. All right, there you go, folks. There are the two marbles in a container. I hope you like the problem. I hope you're able to solve it and kind of understand the solution a little bit better. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel. If you ever have a question, send me an email, something you don't understand in one of my videos. I'll be happy to help you.